that. Auto color and equipment. For the 7.3. Two part, clear coat. It was expensive though, everything is freaking expensive. Well, crap. We got stopped. What do you get when you drive 58 post holiday weekend? Yeah. <laughs> I kind of wasn't holding my lane very good either. I was uh, preoccupied. You know, he's looking for drunks going home. I said, I'm not drunk, I assure you that. Father in law's truck. Found out the AC compressor's locked up. And I was like, well, crap, I, you know, we had a whole bunch of parts. When we moved here, we had uh, almost enough to build a whole brand new truck. Almost. And so I was like looking around and look, bam, look at that. Global. It's a pretty good brand. We've had fairly decent luck with it. And we happen to have it on the shelf. You can, I wiped the dust off of it, but it was sitting way, way over there on that shelf. In the building in stock. Drain the oil and put our own pag oil in it because you'll see, we'll pull this out and it has no dye. We got the engine harness taped. It's got about a quarter of a million miles on it since we did it. So let's put cam and crank sensors on it because those are about a 350,000 mile part in a perfect world. 350,000, you're gonna lose one and then you might as well go ahead and do them both. Well, we got 250, let's get it reset right now. I think we have a new dryer here. So we're gonna put a new dryer on it. Ideally, we'd also put a new AC condenser. Cleaning out AC condensers is a pain in the ass, especially when they only cost about $100. Out here, I might go ahead and clean the condenser. We'll use a burn a can of brake clean, shot back and blow gun and blow it both sides through. We'll have to go ahead and do that to the heater core too and the evaporator core. And then the orifice tube is in there. We'll go ahead and pull the orifice tube, get a health inspection. And if we check the orifice tube, and you replace the dryer, you have both lines completely open. So you might as well throw some cleaner through it and clean it out. It's the condenser that's annoying because it's very, very hard to clean. You'll spend way more than $100 worth of time cleaning a condenser and it looks like it already has a new one on it. Yep, we did replace it. Oh crap. And if the orifice tube checks good, then your chance is pretty good that this compressor locking up did not send metal through the entire system because that's normally what would happen. We'll go ahead and slam, bang a new compressor on this son of a gun and there's metal on the lines and you didn't clean it out. It goes in and destroys the new compressor. AC is the most under repaired system on the truck, period. If you're gonna do it, do it all. So if we're gonna go through here, we break clean out the lines and everything. Clean it all. And then hope we get it clean enough without replacement. I never replaced the evaporator core. Almost never, unless it's leaking. It wouldn't hurt to take the whole box out of the truck and take the evaporator core out of the housing and then you can wash it because it will get ridiculously dirty on it to where air can't flow through it. That's inside that box right there. AC, engine harness, oil cooler, number two injector. Own the glow plugs again. This, these uh, kegs of Freon have become ridiculously expensive. So this is, this is a pretty good reason for us to go ahead and get a can of nitrogen. We need to be leak testing with nitrogen. When it's back down and you're hooked to it, you cannot test Schrader valves. Because I think the Schrader valves are the most expensive parts in an AC system. Uh, they're the cheapest to buy. Well, they're pretty cheap to buy, but they cost a lot of money. Because if that thing leaks, then you lost all your Freon. And now this keg is over $300. It used to be a hundred bucks. I used to buy them for 80 bucks a piece. Now they're like $300. Which, I mean, I have about six of them, but that doesn't matter. This $300 now. So, you know, it's like when gas changes price. It's not the gas that you're buying from the tank. It's what gas he has to replace it with. That's a freaking drag. But, so test your Schrader valves. Uh, normally, we would, when we charge it, it would be a last thing at the very end of the job. We'd have a blow gun and a can of spready soapy water right there. Soapy water, and you spray it on the valve. When you're all the way done, you take it off, and you watch for it to bubble. And if it's bubbling out from soapy water, then you evac the entire system and put a push Schrader valves in. Ideally, you put Schrader valves in like right now, like during during your AC kit, go ahead and replace the Schrader valves, except the low side comes with the dryer. So. Yeah, little AC tech. There's a vent for the evaporator core down at the bottom. You can take the blower motor out and look at the evaporator core. That would also let you see if it's dirty and it would let you wash it out. Right there is the drain. I mean, if it was an evaporator core leak, this would be the smoking gun is to look outside of this, this hole right here where it drains. This is where the water physically comes out where you see it dripping on the ground. 
that hole right there. So you check that with the UV as long as you got dye in your system and it will tell you very quickly that something's wrong. A little term right there, you call that black death. It's done, the whole system is done, done. <laughs> crap. Holy crap, just ran over to the parts department. A brand new evaporator core. Yeah, buddy, look all the dust on it. It's been around for a good long time. But we have that, so mm, how much do we do? I mean, cause there we take the HVAC box off. Mm, every job turns deep, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just AC is <sighs> under repaired system, like I said. I mean, and we probably can get away with it if we, hopefully the lines don't have any leaks. You know, if they have leaks in them. I mean, normally we replace a line. Like if you see something like that right there, yeah, that's done. That's, you need a new manifold line. And that's some of gun right there, both with the two lines on it. That is goes over here and attaches to the condenser up there and attaches to the dryer. About $170 for that line. Mm. That's a deal, flip a coin, do something, figure it out. So I pulled all the screws out, loosen this up, and then you can just pull this off. Unlatch this, and there's the dryer. That was disgusting. That definitely needs a lot of work in there. This will, uh, Flush it out, see how clean we can get it. So we put the AC kit. You're showing a whole kit? So that AC edge compressor just kind of burn us. Oh, we're leaking oil. Put it in a drain pan. We need to measure that. Actually, we're gonna go fresh with all new oil. We'll put nine ounces of PAG oil in. I'll put six ounces in the compressor, an ounce here, an ounce there, and an ounce in the evaporator for it. Nine ounces, that's all I'll put in. Call it done from there. Doesn't even really matter, but let's see if we put dye in it. Huh? Or see if there's anything in it. Holy crap. I saw a drip. Really? Of dirt. <laughs> wow. Um she dry. It might have turned all of the oil into sludge because of the metal and the aluminum, ground up aluminum, the black death stuff. That's all ground up aluminum mixed with oil that turns to paste. I guess it consumed all of it. Well, you want me to hold the tub while you try and spin it? I mean, I'm sure we put oil in it. I'm sure we did. Like you can't spin it, it's too hard to spin. It'll shoot at us. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try. Okay. So. Well. I think that's a that's a problem right there. You should uh, have stuff come out of you. Yeah, there's a uh, the farm's new toy. I guess you can say. Yeah, buddy. Been putting stuff back together. It held vacuum. We held it for a good while, so it must have just been that compressor or one of the O-rings wasn't right. We replaced all the O-rings, orifice tube, dryer, flushed out the condenser and the evaporator core, new compressor, and new oil cooler. We just put a used number two injector in because it actually fired pretty good. It did not fire that bad, so. But number two was not happy all new hoses well mostly new hoses i guess we we did scab a couple in i'm hoping that it was the glow plug control module but all those glow plugs owned out good could have been a plug the plugs or could have been the glow plug control module it's very easy to check i was i was more stuck on uh the flushes and yeah so we can test it now if we have to do all the glow plugs i guess we'll just go back in and do them all again but we didn't do any paint on this. This is what we did years ago. All we did was just water, was just soap and water. A little bit of spray cabinet, maybe a little spray cabinet, but mostly just soap and water and clean, clean the parts and put it all back together. Don't know if we'll get it done tonight or not. Okay, if it wasn't for this aftermarket junk, we'd be done right now. Okay, how's that O-ring looking there? Oh, it is, it's all cut up. 
All right, so we'd be done if I wasn't fighting this aftermarket radiator. Just filling with water now because we still have Cascade in the engine. I left it in there, so now we're going to do a water flush. So we're going to do the first fire up, throw a battery charger on it. Throw 35 amps at it. Those power steering's up. We'll check transmission here in a minute. Then I'm going to fill this the rest of the way up. It's kind of clean in there. I washed, we washed the heck out of it. I mean, I guess, go for it. Nothing? Is it in park? Okay, well, what did we miss? Okay, we ran the batteries too low. Let's let them sit and charge for a little bit. Farm got them a new spreader. That's uh, new to the area. Let's see if we got enough. I put hot water in it. batteries not cool nah okay fine let it charge okay so now we got two battery charges on it Let's see what it does not even close lock eater gets a lot of water out of it it was pretty good water though it wasn't steamy got a little warm. All right, let's get the other side out. Okay. Got it all the way up to temperature. Oh, and we got traffic. So far seems okay. We did not clean the turbo, got nine miles on it. AC is not happy. It might be a little low. I don't really, uh, Don's machine's a little different than mine, so get back to the shop got a couple miles down the batteries really needed to be charged that was almost on the floor I mean I was oh, it's squirrely too I need to don't do that an old farm truck uh, steering wheel shake side to side it's kind of like a dog leg dog wagon trailer <laughs> this truck is probably got a low tire. I imagine the tire is probably low. That's probably why I'm about to smear it all over the side of the highway. Delta's still squeaking. Ready? I'm slowly easing to it, easing to it, easing to it. I'm on the floor. Not bad. I'm, I'm all right with that. So fairly uneventful. I did just restart it. Let it run for a, about a minute. Fired up good. Everything was all right there. But the AC was charged. It's almost done. You back in now. It's got one and a half pounds out of it. But it, it didn't leak it all out. So it was cycling. And so maybe it's a bad idea to spray hot water through the inside of your condenser. Maybe that. Maybe that's a bad idea because I flushed it all out. So if your orifice tube looks like that, you pretty much should not try to clean. Well, we'll see. There is a chance if you keep up on the orifice tube, like it's only ran for a couple of minutes and keep changing the orifice tube, you could potentially clean it, depending on how much dirt is in there. If there was any water left in it, I've acted for a good long, uh, probably 20 minutes. So that dryer could be wet. We're pretty much still experimenting. We're experimenting all the time lately. We could have, put the evaporator core in. I actually had one in the building and we could have waited to buy a new condenser. That would have been the actual repair because it's got a new compressor on it, new accumulator, orifice tube, and flush the heck out of the condenser and evaporator core. I'll go ahead and crack it loose right now while it's back and let's see how the orifice tube looks. <laughs> Holy freaking crap. Okay, so let's, we obviously did not clean it good enough. So we got pretty deep in the steering column. Broken bolts. This goes all the way back at the back with the shift lever on it. Way back in there. And it's real common for these to get loose. Sometimes they'll actually fall out. I, I mean, sometimes they'll actually break too. It's kind of a drag. But if they break, most of the time you could just get down there, get up with the T30 on the back and you can tighten these bolts up. 
and that'll give your shifter a little, it'll be a little more stable. He had one broken cap. We got a used cap and put on that side over there. He needs, we put one bushing on here, a used one. We should have some new bushings somewhere. We put new bushings on it and it's like 50 bucks or something for the new shift lever, new pin, and basically get your shifter solid again. But yeah, right now, his. You gotta get this out. Get that out. Oh my God, that's so dirty. But yeah, his cap looked like that. It should look like that. And it looked like that. It looks good. This is that nice 6.4 right here with the big screen and the six speed manual. Body work. There's the bumper we blew off. That's getting ready to get done. Look at the fenders. This is run what you brown. Remember that busted fender? So they're getting ready to go all black with everything on the bottom of here. Don't know if they had uh, plans on the bumper, front bumper of that. I'm not sure about that. I don't think so. You know, it's all banged up there. It got a little smoothed out and the paint, it'll, it's gonna look great. It's freaking awesome. It's gonna be a whole different truck. I mean, the fender's not all bashed and hanging off the side. And this one's going on that on the clean cut 6.0 build is getting this bumper right here. We're kind of just still getting settled in. Like I'm looking at this truck here right now. I'm looking at this truck. And it just tried as hard as it can to just be a problem. I cleaned the orifice tube out, I don't know, four or five times probably. I think I already took the bolts out. I think we're going to get a new condenser tomorrow. We're going to take the 213s out. I've actually have it. Okay, we're still under vacuum. So it's holding vacuum. I shut it off quite a few hours ago. It's under vacuum right now. I mean, he's got a hundred some odd head of cattle. He's 70 some odd years old. He ought to have air conditioning, even though he won't use it. He won't freaking use it. We'll have to lock it on is what we'll have to do is not give him an option to shut it off, turn the fan all the way on and turn the air conditioner on and he's just going to have to live with it. <laughs> Roll the windows down if you hate it so much. The uh, coolant pump was leaking. I didn't even take the cover off. I didn't even so much as look at it and I should have, but gave us something to do tomorrow, I guess. This is probably going to be a never ending cycle and I very possibly could just justify go ahead and replacing the compressor again getting another compressor another dryer go ahead and do the evaporator core and do the condenser it would work then <laughs> for a, a longer time than five minutes we ran for five minutes and that orifice tube was crap i i resorted at the end even though orifice tube was only a dollar i was like well what, what can it hurt i went back julie did it first went back to the back and physically sprayed the orifice tube with hot water and cleaned them right up. And then you could blow it nice and dry. It cleaned up off that, all that crap that was on it. And we shoved it back in. We did it a couple of times. Bummer is, I mean, this refrigerant's expensive now, fairly like 300 some odd dollars for that little bottle. And we lose a little bit every time, but it's not leaking. So that's the bonus. You know, I'm shooting it in and I'm taking it back out, potentially contaminating everything in the whole freaking world. Well, I've done this quite a bit and I've, I mean, yeah, uh, well, let me hear about your thoughts on that. Contaminating your shop AC system, because, oh, my God, no. I mean, let alone if you're an Internet ninja. Jeez, love, freaking wheeze. You can't even freaking, don't even, don't even say that you did that. This is a Murray, fan uh, Murray coolant pump that I've preached over and over and over again about being great. But, you know, you will be revisiting it unless you sell the truck within... I mean, I'm surprised this is this long. Is this the only one we've done? No. It's not? We've done it a couple... Yes. yes. Okay, so it made it seven years. I thought you were the only one we've ever warranty. No. Yeah, no, it's not the only one. I knew that. So it's bad. And, I, you know, I could have looked at it. I should have looked at it. I didn't even look at it. Like, I had it completely taken apart. I, I had everything out of the way. And, and I was sitting there looking at it, and I just left it in in defiance of the world. And it came back and said, I'll show you, <laughs> you little bastard. And then the AC kit, too. The AC is just an add-on. We did get the brake lights to work because the brake lights did not work. Like, actually, we say we got them to work, but let's see. Yep, third brake light. Let me see if I'm, I don't run fast enough to see if the third brake light's working. 
but they're working now. They'll work absolutely just until we are not with the truck anymore. And then they'll quit working. Guaranteed, that's exactly how it'll work. You know, I should have showed some more on the steering column because we did. I, I, I went a little above on the bushings right here. I actually wrapped, I put the bushing around the column. If you're following me, if you remember, I just did that a little bit ago. And it was still a little loose because I didn't have any brand new bushings. So what I did was I wrapped the bushing with electrical tape, wrapped the outside of it, not the barrel, not with the barrel that spins, the in between the bushing and the cap. So I wrapped the outside of the bushing and then I took a razor blade and I cut the top halves of the bushing off uh, of the uh, electrical tape so that I actually got a good bead of electrical tape halfway down. Because if I didn't cut it and I, I put too much tape on it, then you couldn't even shift it. It was a pain in the butt to shift. But now it is pretty freaking tight. Well, I mean, you got that wiggle, but it's, shifter works. We got the, and Julie got creative with that because this is a manual transmission. All you guys go out there and look at your 06. There is not another 06 on this freaking planet that does not have a three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have Perundula. That's that's what, that's Ronnie right there. We have Drive Two and One. Go out and look at your truck. Julie custom made this cluster right here. It's a custom fabrication type of thing, <laughs> but it's nice and tight. Well, except the bar. Now I put the best bar that I had on it. It's the bar and the pin, and. Maybe that's for another video. Let me know if you want to see something about that because everybody needs a steering column fixed. And it could be a kit, very easily put together. You can still buy all the pieces to make this right. And it's about 150. If you get real extreme, you could spend 200 bucks on it. And that would give you like brand new lever, brand new arm, all kinds of stuff, brand new crap everywhere. Better hurry up though, because you know they're only going to make crap for so freaking long. We got a fuel tank strap that was the wrong one. I don't know why I, I mean, it's okay. Just gives it some room to slack down, doesn't it? I didn't even bolt it down all the way. It's, what, what is that tank? What do you guys know? What do you, what's your input on? What is that for? What is that a uh, fuel tank strap for? Cause this is 06 extended cab long bed, 38 gallon tank. Should be at the regular 38 gallon. That should be a, a generic, that, that one should fit. It should be right. I don't understand why it's so much lower down there in the bottom. Moral of the story is I tried to not practice what I preach and AC being the most under repaired system. I literally went the process of trying as best as I could here to clean it using brake clean, hot water, compressed air, shot vac, just trying to clean, spinning. Up. I physically filled the entire thing with brake clean. I physically filled it all the way up. It was heavy as a son of a gun. Filled it up and was sloshing it around with the brake clean in it and letting it pour out. Yeah, I tried and so if, if that didn't work and then I pulled it, ran for five minutes or if it was trash. <laughs> so, okay. So it's, you're better off to not even do the job. If you're not going to go through and, and replace, don't even freaking mess with it. it. Only when it comes to that black death, because that was like oil impregnated powdered aluminum, basically. Probably the inside of that AC compressor just like in a pill crusher being crushed and minced into paste and it was aluminum paste everywhere i mean you, you damn near need to replace the lines too is basically i mean replace every bit of it because the lines have film too unless you can send something through it that will actually touch the sides and clean it off you know that's a freaking drag which there really is not that much hvac box off accumulator uh, basically just the whole AC kit, every single part that has to do with AC, you take it off and redo it. I guess I could spend the time right now tonight before going and tearing it all off, getting ready for tomorrow. What time is it? When the truck don't start in the morning, you just grab the tractor. How's that thing pull that trailer? Okay, so we went to the new O'Reilly's that we're gonna be using, got some parts. He done loaded up some hay bales. Let's uh, stay back a little bit. There are no straps. We might be dodging.
Okay, we're here in the city back home. Let's see if it cycles now sitting at a dead stop. Huh. Okay, so maybe there's a little hope left for it. But you take off and it's calling for more and that orifice tube is kind of clogged. It hasn't kicked off yet. So the AC compressor is down there spinning right now at idle. Just drove it 130 miles. Here we go. Oh, that would hit the metal. Kicks off. What's that mean? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think of that. Okay, watch this. It needs full set of injectors, I'm guessing. Watch this. See that? No smoke. And then it caught up. So, either I messed up a piece of wire, a wire, when I wired something up, the injectors maybe did not survive the little bit of air that got it ingested through it by me cracking the system. I mean, they're old, dirty injectors. The wires were yellowed. They were old. So they don't owe us anything. And I, it was not doing this before. It wasn't doing that. That's only when you really hammer on it. Like, kind of like to be able to really hammer on it. Okay, back here, we made it. And it is running. Seeing it with me. Hot. Hot air coming out. Might need to top off cooling. AC compressor is running. Golden. And dripping. How long do you think it'll last? I mean, I'm thinking, I mean, I did bring the AC kit home. So that is at the house. I kept it here because it's a long ways away. So I do have the ability to do AC here. I'm thinking, uh, let's run this until it dies and then do an entire kit. Just plan hoses and everything another new condenser a new evap let's evaporator core two. hell with it i mean it'll be the last time we ever buy any ac yeah. i'm afraid that when we shut it off whatever aluminum paste Crap. There's Champ. He didn't go with us. Come on. Whatever aluminum paste that's made is uh, going to settle. I'm afraid of that. Oh, come here. Come here. It's going to settle once we shut it off and let it sit. Maybe I'm just imagining. Probably. What a drag, though. I mean, I wish it would have been just good, but we tried. Tried to save a dollar cost us like four dollars good so the fan is blowing you can't tell but it's blowing and locked in let's go ahead and shut it off this would be my procedure it's cold too it's blowing cold compressor is on staying on so let's shut the switch off All right now Switch on face only and feet only are the only two settings. If you have a truck like this, 04, even 03, any of them, face only or feet only are the only two settings besides off that does not cycle the AC compressor. So that's where we, we have, I turn it to face only or feet only, whichever one you want, turn it there if you put it on face and feet, it cycles AC compressor. So let, I'm letting it blow, let it blow all the water off the condenser, kind of, or the evaporator core, kind of try to dry it out a little bit. And then once that's off, the fan, once it cools the temperature down, it will disengage. It's blowing right now, it's still blowing. So 
If everything is healthy on the truck, this fan will stop blowing. Oh, you can hear it. It'll stop blowing and then I shut the truck off. Like if I was hauling or traveling, you know, like if you got your family with you and you're rolling down the highway and you get off and everybody's stretching their legs out before I shut the truck off, he's gonna stop for any prolonged amount of time. I would do this, have the hood up, let it cool down. Just be nice to it. It just pulled us all the way across the damn country. The least we can do is let her cool down a little bit. Pressure's getting less too. It's, I mean, it's, it, but it's going down as the temperature drops. I don't even know what temperature is. Doesn't matter. It's still hot. I can still feel heat coming out of there. And the blower motor is still blowing, so it's still drying the evaporator core. Because I got it all the way on cold face only. And the squeaking belt on our nice gator back belts here. <laughs> you know, it was that cool.